So the education, um, the school was uh, at its origin, first and foremost, a school for craftsmen, as I mentioned. And the original ambition was to form an academy of art. Uh, but given the harsh Norwegian reality after the dissolvement of the Union in 1814, uh, there were not sufficient funds for such an ex extravagance as uh, an art education would be at the time. So the need in the capital uh, at this time was aimed at raising the level of craftsmanship, uh, as there were many pressing construction tasks. And in the, in the beginning, the age range between the students were uh, wide, everything between the ages of uh, 8 to 10, and also adult professionals. And the school had two-hour daily teaching uh, in basic freehand drawing for 50 to 60 students, uh, eight months a year. So to save money, this measure was temporary, as mentioned, but in, the 18, but in 1822, the school becomes permanent, and it changes the name to the Royal Drawing and Art School of Christiania. So throughout the 19th century, the school develops into the originally planned academy, and the education is more formally based around aesthetic subjects. The classes uh, throughout the years cover topics such as construction, ornament, crafts and decoration, and anatomy and art history. The school rules claimed that the building class, um, the building class should learn to draw classical Greek column orders, as we see in the picture, uh, as well as elevations, sections and plants. And some of the student work uh, that has been saved in the archives, um, uh, here we can see how they practiced uh, constructional drawings, such as roofs, joints, timbering and stairs. And for the bricklayers, we see the same drawings, but of different solutions for brickwork, arches, and vaults. And in the teaching plan from 1889, uh, it is stated that course number 16, which was called Architectonic Style, said that the students shall be given a review of style and proportions. And it is mentioned that because a lot of the teaching material, such as the posters the students would copy, uh, were in German, it is likely that this could have influenced architecture built in the capital in the 1800s. Also at this time, uh, many Norwegian architects are educated abroad, many in Germany, which could also explain why a lot of the classical apartment buildings in Oslo from the 1800s are referred to as Berliner Gårder. I didn't really know what the English term would be for that, but uh, Berlin, Berlin houses. Uh, and these were in the New Renaissance, new Renaissance or New Baroque style. Um, however, uh, the school is at this, still, at this point, not considered a formal architectural uh, education. And the classes were not adapted for architects until 1880, when uh, Harman M. Schirmer gives a series of lectures about architecture and building art. And I'd like to talk a bit more extensively about Schirmer because he played an important role in the de development uh, of the education at the drawing school. He was an architect, art, art historian, and he became Norway's first uh, national antiquary, what we would call the Riksantikvar. He was first employed as a teacher in the building class and later as head teacher of the ornament class. And his teaching supplemented by excursions for the students, would influence a whole generation of Norwegian architects. And this represented a significant turn away from the German-inspired architecture that had previously been taught uh, at the school, and towards what is to be considered uh, a national architectural style founded on the Norwegian architectural heritage. So, in uh, uh, his classes, Schirmer argumented for a general strengthening of artistic dimension in uh, the ornament class that he teached, where he suggested, in addition to ornamental drawings, which we see here is, an, is a practice from one of his students, um, the, he suggested that the students should also have weekly lectures in ornamental nature and development through the historic eras. And he wrote articles such as 
uh, what is the national style in our architecture and how does it appear. And it is said that he was against the dragon, dragon and Swiss style that reigned at the, as the national architecture at the time, uh, because it deviated too far away from the original role models. But still, he uh, taught, uh, he taught the classical orders in his uh, classes about ornaments, and the archives show drawings from his students practicing these, um, the classical columns. And uh, also, he encouraged his students to do uh, floral and nature studies to be inspired uh, when they drew ornaments. And this is a drawing from one of his uh, students, later one of his teaching assistants, uh, Holger Sinding Larsen. Uh, and here we can see he has done a floral study on the left and implemented it into a pattern, maybe used in an interior later on. And uh, here is a drawing from one of his students from one of the um, excursions that he made with them, uh, which is uh, Husflid fra Ellingsbø, it's the title, which I guess would translate into uh, handcrafts. Uh, this is uh, maybe a, a drawing of an uh, embroidery found in one of the, one of the buildings they investigated. So, when Schirmer was given the position as head teacher of the ornament class, he established a new tradition where he brought his students on excursions to the countryside to document and measure all Norwegian heritage buildings. And the drawings uh, they did had to be in a big scale. Uh, all crookedness had to be uh, carefully measured, and the drawings uh, should be finished on site. Uh, so the students would perform the work and Schirmer would uh, lead and control their efforts. So the excursions and uh, the documentation work uh, carried long traditions in the history of architecture and was based on an understanding that only through meticulous close studies of a building one could achieve a full understanding of its construction, materiality and detailing. But Schirmer's idea to put Norwegian traditional architecture on the agenda uh, instead of German-inspired objects was a brand new approach. However, he taught his students uh, not to copy the traditional architecture, but to be inspired by it in their work. So here we see some photos from their excur <laughs> excursions, uh, where we can see one of the students is taking measurements of uh, an old... Uh, what is it called? La Lafta building. I don't know what the, the English word is, but... And here we have another photo where they're doing uh, measurements. And here we see some of the students are drawing uh, on site. Also a student to the left making drawings on site. And on the right we see Schirmer in the center uh, with his students surrounding him. And he is described as a popular and very progressive teacher. He was always surrounded by his students in the photographs from the excursions. And him bringing the Norwegian building heritage into the architecture education uh, marks a break with the previous traditional practice, which was fixated around the classical style uh, and German historicism. So these excursions would later have consequences uh, on the development of Norwegian architecture. And here we have a few examples from the drawings that they made. Uh, this is a stabur. Um, and when we were digging into the archives and the uh, digital photos in the uh, National Museum's archives, it's hard to tell if it's always Schirmer or his students who did the drawings. But if you uh, search for Hermann Schirmer or just Schirmer, then all of these photos will appear. So some of them uh, have, a, have a title where you can see who, who is the artist. And in this case, it's uh, Karl Berner in 1898, where he has done a registration of uh, Björlsta Farm in Hedalen. And you can see that he has taken all crookedness into measure. And also here we, we see um, Christian Christi from 1860 has done registrations from an old farm and even taken the 
detailing on the, the, the smallest details into consideration. And here is an old uh, cabin from Kruke in Hedalen, made by Carl Berner in 1899. And they would also register different uh, churches that would later be inspirational for their own work. And Borgun Kirke in song with uh, with uh, the old Norse motifs on the on the roof. And then we have reached the end uh, when the drawing school is uh, ended. So in when uh, the establishment of NTH, the Norwegian Institute of Technology, uh, came in 1910. Uh, the Enter Hall was uh, modeled after the more uh, polytechnical universities in Europe, and this led to the discontinuation of the drawing school in Kristiania. And I guess we can assume that is because this becomes the sort of uh, state funded architectural education. Uh, and so the school is discontinued, but it has a revival in 1946 when. Uh, uh, to educate architects to help rebuild the country after the war. And then this later evolves into what we today know as AHU, or the Oslo Architecture School. So that is a very brief history of the drawing school. And uh, a lot of the work from this era is not easily accessed today, but luckily we can still see some of the work um, of the students in the National Archives and in the museums, and uh, my sources have been the PhDs of Bente Ås Solbakken, Mathilde Sprovin and Elisabeth Seip, uh, which are very uh, extensive and uh, well-researched. So if anyone is interested in learning more, they're available online as well. So that's all I had. Thank you very much. <laughs>